Welcome to this Recollector training video, where I'll show you how to create and use hyperlinks in your collection. Hyperlinks are one of Recollector's most powerful attributes. They enrich the item details display by letting you include clickable links, just like the links in a web browser, that when you click on them, they bring up additional information or they jump to related parts of your collection. In this video, I'll be working with my map collection, and I'm running here on the Windows version of Recollector, but the Macintosh version works uh, in exactly the same way. If you watch the Editing Tips and Tricks video that's on the uh, same website, you probably remember seeing how you can create what are called Jump To Links. Those are links that let you turn an ID number of some record into a hyperlink so that when you click on the ID number, the display jumps you to the item details for the other record. But Recollector supports a wide variety of other kinds of special hyperlinks, and it's those that I'll be showing you in this video. Let's start by looking down here at the uh, references field in this particular um, item details display. I use the, I have a reference field in, in this collection database, which I use for um, reference citation for bibliographical information to cite books where the particular map is described or documented. And um, in this case, you'll see that I have uh, one such reference already turned into a hyperlink. And let me just show you what happens when I click on that. What it does is it opens up an extended information window or a footnote window at the bottom of the item details display. And in this case, I'm using it to display a bibliographical reference. This allows me to not clutter up the item details display with the full information about each book that I want to refer to. I can just use a shorthand, in this case the author's name, as a key and turn it into a hyperlink so that if I want to look at the full information, I can get it with a click. Well, let me show you how I, you can do that. And you'll notice here there's a second um, reference here, the work by Burden, and I haven't yet turned that into a um, hyperlink, so let's do that. All the hyperlinks are created, edited, or removed through the edit window. So let's open up the edit window and scroll down till we get to the uh, references field. And you'll notice here um, at the beginning of the references field where the Vanderkroak reference is, there's a bit of inscrutable text here with a lot of percent signs. Um, what that is, is that's the way that these hyperlinks are encoded by the program. The encoding is fully documented in the user's manual, but you don't really need to know about it because you can simply use the, the tools and the windows that the program provides to create, to edit, um, to update these hyperlinks. So we won't ever be messing with those, but when you see one like that, you know that that's a hyperlink. What we want to do is we want to create a new hyperlink on this word burden. So to make that uh, be the field that will, the, the text that will be turned into a hyperlink, we select it, we right click to bring up the options menu and choose create edit special hyperlink. And this brings up a window that we'll see quite a bit of in the rest of this video. At the top is a list of the six different kinds of hyperlinks that Recollector supports. Um, they're each known by a single letter code, which is used in that encoding that you may have noticed before, but the important information about them is what's over on the right here. What kind of hyperlink are they? And for this burden case, this is an extended information hyperlink. Sometimes I refer to them as footnote hyperlinks. The way those work is that the additional information, the text that appears in the footnote, is entered and is associated with a key. And then on this window, I associate the visible text, in this case the word burden, with the key that I've created for that extra text. And once I've done that, the footnote then will come up, the right footnote will come up when I click on the hyperlink. I haven't yet created the uh, additional text information for this burden reference work, so let me do that now. I'll click add a new um, extended key plus value, and let's give it, let's give the, make the key name be the same as the uh, author name, Burden. don't have to do that, but it's convenient. 
Now, um, now we type in the bibliographical citation, the text that's going to appear in that footnote. To save time, I'm going to paste it in. I have it copied from a, uh, another source, so I don't have to type it all right now. But let me make one editing change here. Let's, let's make the title be italics, because often in bibliographical citations, that's how it's done. So I'll click OK. And now notice that the visible text burden is associated with that extra text whose key is also burden. So I'll click OK and OK again. And now you'll see burden has been turned into a uh, hyperlink. Let's click on it. And sure enough, there's the expected footnote at the bottom. Now that may seem like a lot of work, and it was a bit of work to set it up for the first time. But the important point is, if I have 30 other records in my collection that want to refer to burden uh, as references, I don't have to go through that work for all of those. Let me show you why. Let's go to the next record. This also has a reference section that includes a reference to burden. Let me show you how easy it is now to create that as a hyperlink. I'll, I'll click Edit to get into the Edit window and go down to the References section and pick burden here again and open up the hyperlink window. And notice it's already set as an X-type link. It's already guessed because of the name matches the visible text that this is the key to use. I don't have to do anything but click OK and OK. And now Burden is shown as a hyperlink here and works the same way. So it's much less work on the subsequent entries. Now. Let's go back to the previous record. Now I want to show you how to create a hyperlink that's a web hyperlink, one that when you click on it opens up your web browser and takes you to a page on the web. For my map collection, I, I scanned a lot of my maps and made high resolution zoomable imagery for them. And I put those up on a website. And I'd like to be able to include links to that website on my item details so that I can just click from the item details display and it'll bring up the zoomable imagery. And let me show you how to do that. Again, we click Edit. And notice that I had created a field here called Zoomable Image. So that's where I'm going to create this new hyperlink. Let's just type some text here. Click here to see Zoomable Image. And let's turn the word here into my hyperlink and go down to the Create Edit Special Hyperlink, and here we're back again. Now, let's start by showing this as a W-type link, which is a full web URL. And the information that the program needs at this point is simply a full URL. So where is the Zoomify image for, uh, the, for this particular map? And I happen to know it is at gallery.maprecord.com. 86.html. So you type in any URL that you want to make a link to, and that's all there is to it. Click OK and OK. And now you'll see the zoomable image is showing up in the item details, and the here is a link. Let's click on it. And there it brings up this zoomify, zoomable imagery for that particular map. Now, I mentioned that I have lots of these zoomable uh, map images on this website. They're all in this gallery.maprecord.com area. And the URLs for the different images are all very close to one another. They're all exactly the same except for the, the little number that identifies the item, the ID number of the map that it's referring to. So. Since I want to create a lot of these links on different records, each to very similar URLs that differ only by their ID number, it's the internal part of that URL address, um, there is a much more efficient way to do it. It'll make it much quicker for me to create these links. And let me show you how that works. Let's go back into the editor. And I want to edit. I want to change the way I've made this hyperlink here. If you select any of the text within this existing hyperlink, within that area bracketed by the percent signs, and then click Create Edit Special Hyperlink, 
it opens up the uh, the hyperlink dialog here, already initialized to exactly what the hyperlink currently is set at. And this is what we just entered a moment ago. But what I want to do now is I want to use the other kind of URL link type, this thing called a patterned URL. So I'm going to choose p-type link. Now a pattern URL is a little bit like the extended information in that we have a key and then we have some text. And what the text is, is the full URL, but done, as we'll see in a moment, with a, a bit of the URL replaced as a parameter within a pattern. And we assign a key to that pattern, and then we'll reuse the pattern. So let's add a new pattern definition. And let's call the key anything we want. Let's just call it gallery. And now you type in the full URL, just like we did, be did before except when it comes to the point where we're going to type in the number of the, the ID number for the map, we're going to put in a placeholder that's for a substitutable parameter. And that's, as it says in the text right above, with a dollar one. That's a substitutable parameter. And let's finish it out, HTML, and say OK. Now, so the program says now, OK, we're going to associate with visible text here, we're going to use the pattern that's in gallery, but that pattern has a parameter. So what's the value we want to substitute for that dollar one? Well, that's the 86. That's the number of the current map that we're on. So we type in 86, click OK, OK. Now this looks just the same as it did before, and we'll double click, uh, we'll click on it just to bring it up to make sure. OK, it still works. It still brings up the same page. You see the page that it's bringing up, the one with 86.html. But the important point here is now we have a reusable pattern. So let's go to the next record, this map we were looking at a while ago as well, and let's do the same thing here. Let's edit and let's do a link here. Um, I'll just make it shorter here. I'll just say click here. And then I will go to create edit special hyperlink, and I'll make a p-type link here. And I will choose the gallery pattern. And here, I will put in the number for this record. And you may be able to see it at the top that this is record number 175. So click OK and OK again. And so now we have a link to a different web page, the one that has, or should have, we'll see in a second, the zoomable image for this second map. And there it is. So that will speed up considerably uh, entering these kinds of hyperlinks. Now, let me scroll down in this record here. You see in the information section, I have one of these jump to links that I mentioned before and that's described in that other video, where if I uh, click on that link, let me just do that now, it jumps me to record number 15. I type Control B to go back. Um, this works fine, but it's not the most elegant presentation of a hyperlink. What I really like is I like where it says here the third state, by far the most common. Maybe I'd like to turn third state into a hyperlink so that I can just click on that. It takes me to that record number 15. And let me show you how you can do that. We'll click Edit. We will scroll all the way down so we get the information field displayed here. And let's wipe out this... Uh, jump to link that we had, and instead select third state, and go to our hyperlink window, and now we are going to create a record jump, or an R-type link. And here, all we have to identify is which record we want it to jump to. The drop-down list shows you all the record ID numbers that are in your collection. You pick the one you want, OK, and now you see what it looks like. Now it says the third state is now a hyperlink. I click on it, it takes me to record number 15. So it's very much like, uh, it works the same way it, it did before, but it looks a little nicer. Okay, now I'm going to show you a media link, a link to an audio or a video clip. I'm going to open up the record for a map that is folded into a book. And I made a short video of 
how this map folds into the book that it's in. And I would like to make a link so that when I click on it, it shows the video. And uh, you notice down here under condition, it says folds into the book. Well, how about if I turn that phrase into a hyperlink that brings up a video that actually shows it? Let's show you how you do that. I'll go back to edit. Let's select this uh, folds into the book text and do create special hyperlink. And now this is a media type link. So I will pick the M type link. And now all I have to do is identify the media file. Where is the video file? And I happen to know it's uh, right here, 146a.mov, movie file. So I've identified it and click OK, OK. And now we have a hyperlink. It's as simple as that. And click on it. And it opens up, uh, in this case, Windows Media Player. If you're on the Mac, it would open up the QuickTime Player, and you will display the video. So we can watch the map being unfolded and folded back. Um, you can also do the same thing to audio files, in which case, when you click on them, it will play the audio. And finally, let me show you a, uh, a way to make links to um, other kinds of information that you have in other files. Let's say you have an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document or a PDF Adobe Acrobat file or any kind of file that some other program is used to display it. You can make links to any kind of document like that and have them uh, come up in a single click. And let's show you how. This map is a map that I had some conservation work done on. And I have scanned and made a PDF file out of the um, description I got from the conservator for, uh, for the work that was done. So let me add that to this condition uh, field here. So I'll open Edit. And we'll scroll here to... Um, we're looking at the condition, and let's add a new paragraph. Let's say Louise Baptiste did conservation work on this map. I'm going to say see invoice. And I'm going to select the word invoice. I'm going to turn that into a hyperlink. Um, and this is an F type link, a file link going to link to an associated file, and all I have to do is identify the file. So let's find that file. There it is, 147 Conservation Invoice. Okay. And now it's a hyperlink, which, when I click on it, it opens up Adobe Acrobat, because it's a PDF file, and I can look at the uh, report right there. Okay, so that's really the uh, overview of the different kinds of hyperlinks that you can create with Recollector to really uh, make your collection a much more richly described one.